It's one which I relive every four years because the picture that they broadcast every four years of the guy standing on the balcony. I saw that through my binoculars. The American's building was only about 100 yards from where everything was happening. It went from the excitement, enjoyment, you know, everybody partying at the discotheque in the, in the Olympic Village to armed guards walking the perimeter of the fence every 50 feet, tanks in the, in the underground parking lot. It changed the atmosphere completely. You know, there's so much positive, and then there's that. Being a favorite going into that tournament was pretty remarkable, as I was the reigning 1971 world champion in Target. So I had high hopes going into Munich. I mean, this was the Olympics. This wasn't a state championships or, or a uh, national championships. It was the whole world. I was in the right place at the right time. I was peaking repeatedly at the tournaments that I needed to peak at. I took first place for the men's team in, in the Olympic trials. It was a pretty amazing experience for a country boy from Pennsylvania. And the real attraction for me with archery was that the better I shot, the more I got to travel, the more places that I got to go. So uh, we get on the plane probably four or five days before opening ceremonies when we went over. We get all checked into the village and everything, and of course we start practicing. And things were going along pretty smoothly, right up until the Arab-Israeli incident, which actually happened the day before we were supposed to start shooting. We hadn't started actually competing yet, and at that point in time, nobody was really sure if we were gonna get a chance to compete. I just had to hope and pray that things were gonna move forward. And I had to be prepared for that eventuality, which, which we were all hoping for. It was probably divine intervention because I needed a day off. I'd been practicing so hard for almost two weeks. I was having some timing issues. I was having some issues getting used to my new bow. That day probably let everything soak in that I'd been doing. And they had the, the memorial ceremony for the athletes that lost their lives. And we got up the next day and got bussed out to the, to the field and the whistles blew and everything was as it should have been. I felt prepared. I felt like I was ready. I had my mother and dad sitting in the stands behind me. So I had that support and uh, my first arrow was 10. It was the first tournament that I could remember that I started in the lead. I was always a slow starter. It scared me to death. I went back to my dad and I said, what do I do now? Because I was always used to chasing somebody. And my dad said, just shoot like you're 20 points behind. There was no way to avoid looking at the leaderboard. You know, it was, 60 feet wide and 30 feet high and I knew where I was. I wasn't thinking about that so much as I was thinking about each individual arrow and each individual end and each individual distance. I was shooting the best arrows that I had shot 
the whole time I was over there in Munich. During the first feed, I, I hit 50 meters and I had one of those arrows that everybody has once in a while, the ones that just kinda you, you, you'd love to get your fingers back on the string, but you can't. And uh, I ended up tying the world record at 50 meters with a miss. Victor Sidoruk, he came down and give me, gave me a great big bear hug and a kiss on both cheeks. I still had three arrows in my quiver. I'm John Williams. I am the Olympic gold medalist from the very first Olympic Games that archery was reintroduced in 50 years ago.